barometers work? How do they not work? You might think this is a very trivial question, but I guarantee you it is not. Hello guys, this is Keats to the Truth. I hope you had a wonderful Happy New Year's. Um, you had a Merry Christmas. And uh, we're back here in January, even though it's, you know, the Gregorian calendar we're under. That's fine. Or, or it, maybe it's not. But we are here nonetheless. And we have another sun cycle that we're going through. Another earth cycle that we're going through. Which is what matters. And the attitude with which you live your life. And your relationship with the source of creation and the divine. So um, I'd like to apologize for making this recording next to my fridge, but I didn't have a, another space to do so. And um, I have a little bit of a, an ache here on my tooth, so I still needed to do the video. And um, you know, it's been a while, so I, I just, I'm just gonna dive into it, okay? Um, so, you know, the barometers, they claim, are an instrument for measuring atmospheric pressure. Hmm, used especially in forecasting weather and determining altitude. So, <clears throat> why do we need a barometer? Well, because it's a gauge that helps us measure the pressure in the atmosphere or the atmosphere plane and the air around us which is going to lead to, you know, telling us about the weather, predicting weather, knowing when there's a storm coming through, etc. Except that this is not true. Now you may be thinking, "Keys to the truth again," and you you you've lost it, and you lost you've lost your mind. You you're losing us here. What on earth are you saying? Are you out of your mind? You know, what else could it be measuring? Well, I'll show you the proof. I'll show you the evidence. But first things first, you got to start from the key of truth of knowing that everything, absolutely 100, 1,000% of what they tell you is a lie. So this is where you have to have your inner adult or your outer adult guiding you and taking care of your inner child or your actual child if you are a child. You see what I'm saying? It, you need to be, as the Bible tells us, wise as serpents, but gentle as doves. So absolutely everything they tell you is a lie. Just out of the get-go, from the beginning, barometers measure, what are they, you tell me they measure, they measure pressure? Okay, that's a lie. Well, what, what do you mean, Sela? You're, you're, you're calling me a liar. Well, you're a bona fide liar. You've been proven liars time and again. Okay? I'm talking about the elites and um, the, the fake teaching system and the fake educational system and the fake science and all that gibberish. Okay? Which is complete crapola. Okay? So, from the get-go, that's it. It's a lie, and then you start looking, well, if it's not true, then how do they really work, and what are they really measuring, and how is that related to the weather? So let's dive, let's dive deep into it. Uh, first things first, the name, they claim it came, comes from the Greek, right? Baros, which is weight, and meter. Well, I don't buy that either, because Greek although it's a very beautiful language, it's an ancient language, it's not the first language, okay? It's still a derived language. Derived from where? Derived from Sanskrit, like every other language in the world. And I'll, you know, you can go to my playlist on that subject. I'll do a lot more videos on that subject. But again, I don't want to get carried off into all these rabbit holes, because there are so many. Uh, let's see a little bit here more of what they tell us. A barometer is a scientific instrument used to measure atmospheric pressure, blah, blah, blah. Barom barometric pressure, um, layers very wrapped around the earth. Like, come on, you're, you're lying through your teeth right here, okay? 
So from there, you see that it's sprinkled with lies. The air has a weight and press, press against everything it touches. As gravity pulls, okay, we know gravity is not real. There's something there, and I figured out what it is, but I'll do that in another video. Um, barometers measure this pressure. So lie, 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 and then we're supposed to take the air pressure thing as a truth. No way. There's just no way. Remember, this is like you're a detective, right? You're a DA questioning a witness, a suspect. And, um, you know, they're, they're, they keep lying. So in this methodology that I'm using, you, you tell me, keys to the truth, hey, how come you're using, you know, the internet? Or how come you're using Google or Wikipedia or YouTube? All these sources that have no validity. Well, it's the same principle. You're, you, if you're not, ask them a direct question, they're going to lie to you. Because they're covering their, their butt, they're covering their tracks. But if you start asking them indirect questions, you start cross-referencing stuff, referencing stuff, then you, you start making them, you know, make mistakes and you I'm going to show you all their mistakes okay so first of all how come is there's different grades of pressure in the atmosphere well there might be just like when you dive into the water there there's you know you dive deeper your ears start ringing more so there you can feel the pressure right but in the atmosphere Maybe if you're going up on a plane or a mountain, you, you start feeling that popping sensation too. So there's definitely some, some pressure differentials in the atmosphere, in the air. I'm not saying they're not. What I'm saying is that bar barometers don't measure them. They measure something else. I'm going to show you what it is. So let's keep going. And you can read up on all their lies here. I usually don't, honestly go through all their lies, I just find what I need and I let the rest slide because if not, you're just going to fill your conscious mind and your subconscious, which is not real. The subconscious doesn't exist. It's your soul. So stop using their term terminology, but I'm using it right now just as a bridge. So stop feeding your soul, stop feeding your mind with garbage. I mean, that's really important too. That I would call that another key to the truth. Um, and then you know, just just glance at it, you figure it out, and then stop feeding yourself um, all this nonsense. Okay. So here we go. Let's keep going. Back to the word barrow in Sanskrit actually means what they claim it means. It means a load, load carrying. Just like in Greek. Okay, then great. And then meter, we find out has a some look at this builder. What else is a builder but a mason? So that's why they call all these things the meter, the measuring stick, because they want to be the measuring stick, the master builder, the architect. That's what they call their demiurge the architect, right? That's what they call the devil because they believe that he built this place, right? Makes sense. Of course not. Okay, I'm being facetious. So everything, all those meters, metrology, you know, measuring units, they're named after their great work, which is not a great work of any kind. It's the devil's work. So let's stay in the positive. Let's stay in the light of God and, and keep going. And we need to stop seeing the devil everywhere. And it was my brother once that told me, hey, you know, all you talk about is, you know, conspiration stuff and this and that and the other. And all you talk about is the devil, brother. What, what's going on with you? What's wrong with you? And like, he was right, you know. And that realization came to me a few years ago. And, and then, you know, I stopped doing that. And, you know, I you still kind of have to know that you're, there's poison in that apple so you don't take a bite. But you also have to realize that God made the apple, right? And there's there's a deeper truth 
and a deeper and a higher power always at work. So stop seeing falling for for the trick of seeing the devil everywhere. You know, and you can't be a sheeple either who doesn't see anything, right? Just completely um, mindless zombie. But you know, you have to go past their delusions and and get to that state of vidya where where you're starting to see, okay, this is God, this is God, everything's God. Um, whole creation is God. The creator and the creation are one and the same. So, and then you start getting to a different level. Uh, I'm not saying I've, I'm there, but you know, that's where you I strive to that level, right? So let's keep going. I'll do videos on all these subjects again. Um, there's just so much that, you know, I would do five hour videos and that's not the point, right? So a thermometer, why am I talking about thermometers here? Because they're related. You know, remember they used to have both using mercury the thermometer and the barometer they used mercury back in the day now everything is electronic and you know I, i'm going to tell you how the mercury barometers work but then it's going to be up to you to do your homework and see how the you know electrical or, uh, thermometers or electrical barometers work because when you have something that's electrical you can get it to do pretty much anything or read pretty much anything but it doesn't prove or disprove a thing. What I'm going down is back to the basics, the principles, okay? So if you have a measuring device that's using mercury here, it's it used to go up in the thermometer, in the little thingy, and um, that one, you know, I, I'm sure plenty of you have played around with them, and, you know, it, it, it works, it goes up with the temperature, okay? And and then that's where that's where you start going. Hmm. There's there's something strange here. Is the temperature related to the pressure, or why are they both using mercury? So then let's take a look at the mercury. Why are you using mercury? You filthy lying scumbag. <laughs> I'm kidding. No. But um. So mercury, the element also referred to as quicksilver, is this liquid metal. You know that I'm sure you guys know. It's a metallic liquid that's quite dense. I mean, it's got a lot of strange properties. Uh, it's, it's you know, referred to as, as a very strange, atypical metal in the sense that it's liquid at room temperature. And it, indeed, it's even liquid at, you know, sub-zero temperatures, I think, uh, like down to 20 degrees or 40 degrees minus zero, something crazy like that. So... Um, it's a very strange, um, it's not an element, it's a strange matter. Um, and um, you can watch videos on how they make it some other time. But it's got a lot of properties. And it's also a crystal, right here, crystal structure, rhombohedral, right? Remember my video on what matter is composed of. Matter is composed of crystals. There's no such thing as atoms. There's no such thing as electrons. There's no such thing as molecules. There's no such thing as photons. Those are all CGI fake hoaxes, okay? Watch my videos on the subject, and um, you can see that they hide the truth here in plain sight. Crystal structure. It's a crystal. When you freeze um, mercury, you can see the crystals. You can actually grow mercury crystals. So, um, and it's got some strange properties. It's going to have a, a lot of, um, a very high magnetic susceptibility, a very high electrical conductivity, a very high thermal conductivity, like most metals, okay? And, but the one thing that sets it apart is that it has a very high coefficient of expansion. Now, I'll go into all these details here. Um, and you can, you can compare, you can contrast with other non-metals, for example, like carbon doesn't have these properties. Copper has some similar properties, but not the same as iron, bismuth. You can also compare dielectric, uh, properties, diamagnetic and paramagnetic properties. So here we have, for example, a thermomagnetic study of mercury. Okay. Those things are interesting to look at. Now, sometimes you can you can open these fully, but right here they're just giving us the abstract. Thermomagnetic study of mercury and dilute amalgams. Okay, so 
basically, I mean, you don't need to go through the whole thing. You can if you want to. The results obtained from Mercury, um, they're giving here. But basically, what they're telling you is Mercury conducts thermal energy very well, heat, and also conducts magnetism very well. Okay. So back to the gauges, thermometer, mercury, um, barometer, pressure. I don't see no, no thing here about pressure. Do you see here anything about pressure? No pressure. Okay. What I'm seeing is like magnetism. Wow. And you start seeing what I'm going to get to. Mercury is also named after a false deity, a false god, probably a, a fallen angel that took on that name. Uh, in the um, Greek pantheon and the Roman pantheon, okay, uh, which is the god of financial gain, false god of financial gain, commerce, eloquence, messages, communication, trickery. <laughs> so you see there's trickery, and you don't think there's going to be trickery in the barometer. Of course there's going to be trickery in the barometer. <laughs> By all means, it's named after their false god. Please, people. So, um... Let's see some Sanskrit here. Mercury. They call the, um, the Quicksilver, they call it Parada. And um, the planet or the wandering star, they call it Buddha. Again, this is a pointer that maybe Buddhism is not what it's all, all that it's cracked up to be. And I apologize to any Buddhists out there listening to this. But, um, you know, the source is the Sh Shaivism of Kashmir, the Vedanta. And the Bible, and that's it, pretty much. I mean, there might be other sources, cool, you know, the Apocrypha, all these things, yes. But, you know, Buddhism is pretty recent. And, you know, to have a, a wandering star na named Buddha, and then you have somebody that claims to have been self-enlightened, call himself the Buddha, they're just really, really coincidental, if you ask me, and there's no such thing as coincidence. So this whole thing about self-illumination, it's, it's BS, right? If you ask me, um, you, you can only be illuminated from within. Yes, I agree. However, you need the divine, you need God to give you said illumination. Anyway, let's keep going. God being the source, of course, of all creation. Um, let's move some tabs here. Hold on. Please, my edit this out. Okay, here. There now. Let's go to relation between temperature and electrical conductivity. Again, why are you asking Google? I'm asking this this witness. I'm asking this suspect. Tell me the truth. I want the truth. You know, and they're gonna tell me the truth eventually. Even though they're always lying, they're gonna make a mistake. So the conductivity invariably increases with increasing temperature. Ta-da! Applause, please, applause. <laughs> I'm kidding. But look, guys, it doesn't take a genius to figure this out. But we're so under the spells, we're so bewitched, we're so under the thrall of Kali Yuga, Kali Asura, the devil and his minions, and we've fallen away from God ourselves, you know, through our self-indulgence and the indulgence of our pleasures, the indulgence of our senses. And, you know, the Bibles, all the, the Vedic scripture, all the scripture are always going to tell you, you know, you, you, need, you need to, you know, renounce your ego. You need to renounce your egoism. You need to renounce the indulgence of your senses so that you can realize the light from within, the light that connects you to God um, through the grace of God. <clears throat> and so even bright minds are, are clouded from with this, these binding spells uh, of darkness, you see? So sometimes we don't even see things that are just so simple. There is a invariable... You know, the conductivity invariably increases with increasing temperature. They're related. They're correlated, directly correlated, one with each other, okay? The electrical conductivity increases, okay? So with 
the thermal conductivity. And here we go. How does temp another source? This is from an actual institution. How does temperature affect the conductivity of a conductor? Okay, the electric conclusion, the electrical conductivity will decrease with increase in temperature. Well, they're saying here the here's the opposite. But even if it's one or the other, there's a relationship. Okay, it can be direct or it could be inverse, right? Depending on the material. But there is a, re a relationship that's very intertwined. And here, for example, here in this research gate paper, they're saying it's a direct relationship, direct correlation right here. Okay, research gate, gate relationship between electrical conductivity and temperature. They're not telling us in which material. Natural soils, this is natural soils. So in natural soils, there is a direct, not an inverse, but a direct, meaning when the temperature goes up, your X, your Y, electrical conductivity is going to go up. And there's actually a law in physics that's called the, the Wiedemann or Wiedemann Franz law. In physics, the Wiedemann Franz law states that the ratio of the electronic contribution of the thermal conductivity K to the electrical conductivity of a metal is proportional to the temperature. Proportional. Okay? The, theoretically, the proportionality constant L is known as the Lorentz number. Now, keep that in mind because I'll refer back to it. The empirical law is named after Gustav Wiedemann and Rudolf Franz, 1853. Okay? Who most likely plagiarized all this work from uh, the ancient Vedic scriptures when they um, plundered India back in the 1600s, 1700s. And, and you have all these equations, and we, I could go into the equations, but I don't want to like bore you to death. But you can go into them here at your leisure, um, depending on your, your level of analytics. Um, and But, you know, equations, you can make equations pretty much say anything. It's through a relationship between the terms. You can call these, you know, little rainbows and, and unicorns and alicorns and pegasus. And, you know, it's three pegasus to, to a one unicorn. But what it really, you know, comes down to is the relationship between them. Okay. So the Lorentz number is a di dimensionless number that relates the thermal conductivity of a metal to its temperature and its electrical conductivity. The Lorentz number equals voltage squared times specific electrical conductivity divided by the temperature difference and specific thermal conductivity. Okay. Conductivity, electrical conductivity. And there's scholarly articles, thermal conductivity and electrical conductivity of metals. <clears throat> and here they're saying it's invert thermal conductivity is inversely proportional to electrical conductivity in metals. Thermal conductivity is proportional to electrical conductivity in metals. It's inversely proportional. So they're saying um, the thermal conductivity of, of mercury is quite high. The speed of sound, you, you can also look at that. The thermal expansion, it's really, really, really high. But it's very important that we keep that in mind that they're saying that in metals, the electrical conductivity is inversely proportional. It's proportional, but it's they're saying it's inversely proportional in metals. You can look at all these scholarly articles on your own time. Um, I guess this is your own time. Um, and just expand on this. Very important, guys. Do not repeat a word I'm saying. Do not believe a word I'm saying. You always have to verify everything through your own keys, right? So this has been weaponized against us, this characteristic of humans that we tend to see and hear something and then we just start parroting it, repeating it endlessly like it's some sort of truth. 
<laughs> it's been used against us to great effect, and it's one of it's in the playbook of the enemy, and um, they they got us against the ropes with it. So stop saying, repeating anything that you hear or see. You first have to experience it, verify it on your own, run it through your filters, one thousand percent, and then you might. Be saying, well, I don't know if this is true, but I'm kind of leaning, you know, in, in this direction or, or this kind of makes sense until we have further evidence, until we have more knowledge, more wisdom. I'm going to kind of adopt this idea temporarily. So that's the kind of mindset that you have to have. Again, the adult protecting the child, that relationship. Okay. So Mercury magnetic susceptibility. They're saying it's small. Look, look here. They're they're lying through their teeth, and I'll show you how much they're lying. Look, they're saying it's small relationship. Okay, magnet, and you have papers on the subject. Um, Mercurial electrical conductivity, and then you you start looking for applications as well, and you see something that they weren't telling you before. You're seeing that you know mercury can be used in to make cells, actual electrical cells, as acting as a cathode, and uh, light bulbs and stuff. And it's also used to make PVC. So I'm not going to go that down that route, but you can investigate. There's something they're hiding here, and, and then you, you can investigate that further. I might do a video on that later. Um, so, But let's keep going. Mercury batteries. So why would you be using mercury? in a thermometer because of the thermal conductivity. Okay, it makes sense. It expands the, the mercury in the tube. Okay, that makes perfect sense. What doesn't make sense to me is that you're using purportedly uh, the mercury in the barometer to measure pressure. Why don't you use water? Why don't you use oil? Why don't you use any other liquid? Okay, that's highly viscous and, and that's got a high ex, uh, rate of expansion. Why are you using mercury that's highly susceptible to magnetism and that's highly conductive to electricity? Why? And that you can use as a battery. It makes no sense that you would be using that to measure air pressure. Um, and then now we start realizing what's really going on. Okay. Um, and you, you can you can research this all this on your own. Mercury cathode applications, mercury battery diagrams. Uh, the works, electrical properties of liquid mercury. I mean, the list goes on and on. And these are actual journals of science, so-called science, right? Um, where they, they have to divulge some, some of the truth because otherwise they couldn't do anything. Otherwise, they can get a car to move or a TV to turn on, right? So they, they lie, lie, lie to obscure the truth from you. And uh, they also cast a lot of black magic spells. But so that's why it's so important to have a, a direct relationship with, with God, with your creator. And a lot of people tell me, save the religious mumbo jumbo, save the spiritual stuff, save the philosophy. And, and just give me the hard facts. You're not going to get to them if you don't do that. It's one or the other. It's like if you want to be a really good boxer and you want, don't want to do cardio. You're never going to be a good boxer. You're going to gas out in 30 seconds, buddy. Okay? So it's the same thing here. No relationship with God. You're not going to see it. Period. Okay? I can show you all the events. You're not going to see it. Okay? So why have how come millions of electrical engineers, millions of PhDs are not coming out with this stuff? Because they can't see it. Because they're blinded. Okay? By their own self-indulgence. <clears throat> which lets the evil in. Metallic conductance, supercritical mercury gas, blah, blah, blah. Empirical relationship with the electrical conductivity of mercury and temperature over its entire liquid range. Man, I'd love to read these PDFs, but some of them, uh, you need to be like a member of something or pay for them. And, you know, for the point that I'm making here, it's not necessary. Um, maybe I'll do that later. But with the abstracts, you, you can kind of get it. And here's, for example, this abstract. Uh, with the, the relationship, meaning there's a high <clears throat> electrical and thermal conductivity of metals. Their main character characteristic, uh, mercury is the only metal whose electrical conductivity has been measured over its entire liquid temperature range. 
Um, so there's there's just so much work here, and if they're telling you there's there's an intimate relationship between the thermal dynamics <clears throat> and the behavior in the mercury and the electrical dynamics. Okay, um, rate of expansion. You can see a table here with the thermal expansion factor. You can see mercury is the highest of all these materials, over 60. Um, thermal conductivity is good. It's not as high as copper or silver. Electrical resistivity, it's rather high. It's very high, actually. Electrical conductivity, they claim it's low, but I'm going to show you some videos that might suggest otherwise. It's pretty dense. Um, melting point, well, it's going to be around minus 39 degrees. <clears throat> when there's mercury rising in the thermometer, we've covered that. When does it rise in the barometer, we've covered that. Mercury rising. There's a film, there was a film, right, about a kid that knew too much. Mercury rising. So, again, another key to the truth. In their media, they, they hint at you some of, some of the truth that you can actually see that, you know, there's something to the mercury rising, which is not what you think. Now let's go on to some videos that will actually elucidate the facts. And now a technique that I like to use is I don't go for conspiration or truth videos because they're usually lying. 99% of those people out there are lies, liars, shills, plants, controlled opposition. So you go, for videos that don't have a vested interest, uh, like this one here. This guy doesn't care about necessarily the truth or not the truth. He, he's just doing an experiment. All right. And still, you have to be careful. You know, you have to be very skeptical. But he's running a current. He's throwing the mercury in. And that mercury is going to dance, baby. Dance for me, baby. Look at this. You see? Which brings me to my point and my conclusion. Barometers do not measure atmospheric pressure. Barometers measure electrical conductivity in the air. I will repeat that. Barometers do not measure atmospheric pressure. Barometers measure electrical conductivity in the air. Booyah! There we go. That's the conclusion. And when you realize that, the sky's the limit, all pun intended. You start seeing that there's going to be huge, huge implications derived from this fact that it is the electrical conductivity, electromagnetic properties in the air that are changing, that are creating the weather patterns. It is not a atmospheric pressure event. It is an electrical conductivity event. Remember what, when I told you how clouds float? How you know, millions of pounds of water stay afloat on top of our heads without crashing down and drowning us all in one second? Well, that's exactly why. Because there's, I told you, how much energy there, there is in, in the clouds. There's more than one gigawatt of uh, energy per cloud. Look at all the lightning. Hear all the lightning when it strikes, when it discharges. But right now, it's charging. When there's no storm, when there's no clouds, it's charging. And then it's creating the ice crystals energetically. And I'll do more videos on all these subjects because, you no, know, the ramifications here are going to be just mind-blowing. And, and when you have this realization, you see like, oh, so that's how the weather's made. That's how they're manipulating the weather. And then it makes sense why they lied to you about the barometer in the first place. Because they don't want you to know. They don't want you to have that capability. If you look at it from a military standpoint, which is the way they do it. Because they're like complete psychopaths that are always, you know, psychotic and, and, and they're paranoid. But... When you see that, they're like, oh, that's why they're lying, you know? If it, if it meant anything at all, I mean, they're lying, period. But, you know, now you know why they're lying, because they want don't want you to have these capabilities. And you can see endless videos of uh, people conducting electrical 
and electromagnetic experiments with uh, with mercury and there you have it okay that mercury is going to be behaving and moving different ways depending on the electrical conductivity okay look at this guy's throwing a battery in, in the liquid mercury and that battery is spinning we have this battery in, in the liquid mercury and it's spinning it's spinning like there's no tomorrow right so there, it's definitely has a very deep relationship with electricity and magnetism electromagnetism that's why they're using it in the barometer and and this is the proof right here like they say the proof is in the pudding okay this guy also built beautiful beautiful videos these these people very very smart individuals but how come they didn't figure out the barometer stuff maybe they did maybe they didn't come out with it but um you know it's got a lot to do with the psycho um psychological and spiritual blinders that we have on see my point so here's here's he's moving the the fluid with with his electrical device here and he's holding it and then he's releasing it and it's it's pretty cool too um, you, you can watch this at length whenever you have more time uh, i'm just doing it here to to prove a point of of what barometers really really measure and um what's really going on in the skies above us So what's charging the atmosphere? This leads to more questions. Like, remember I told you, knowledge is infinite. Okay, wisdom is infinite too. And you, you can look at the different types of barometers. I've debunked one for you here, uh, but, but you can look at, at different ones. And then let, let's, let's listen to this one quickly here. There's a lot of damage. And what wind associates with is pressure. Faster moving air has a lower pressure than still air. Therefore, you know, on a pretty sunny day, there's no wind. The leaves are staying on. He's wrong. Wind's not related with pressure. I've just proved it to you. Because they're lying to you in the measuring device. Wind's related to electrical conductivity. And now you know what makes the wind. Did you ever ask yourself? I'll do a video on that specifically. What makes the wind? That's a beautiful question. And probably a kid has asked you, or when you were a kid, you asked it, and then somebody gave you the wrong answer, and that, that was it. They stumped your mind, okay? And then that's a horrible thing to do to, to a human a mind in development. You see how this is so pernicious? Why do they feed you so many science museums, so many science videos? Discover Magazine, which I used to read every day. National Geographic, which I used to read every day. It's all nonsense, but why do they feed it to you? It's because it's poison to you. On the trees, you're not getting blown, blown all over the road. The pressure is going to be higher. So on a barometer, your pressure would be all the way over here. Um, or even higher. Um, and when a storm comes, the barometer is going to drop. The pressure is going to decrease because the wind is increasing. And it's going to decrease the pressure all around that area. That's, this is one reason that mariners use this device to... Yeah, except that's all, you know, that's all fine and dandy. But it's the electrical conductivity that rises and falls and leads to weather events. You can also they, you see that it's been used in in um, other devices, and you can see graphs for the Weedman France law and the relationship between you know what I mentioned earlier ionic conduction. There's there's no such thing. It's the relationship between crystals and crystal energy. But I'll do more videos on all these subjects, guys. If you like the, the video, please like, subscribe. It helps the algorithm to suggest to other viewers. Uh, share the video, download it, rip, rip it, copy it, mirror it, anything you want. Um, I really appreciate you. And, um, you know, I'm glad to be making the first video of this year. Uh, I'll surely do more. I got a lots of lots of mind-blowing stuff like this coming your way. And um, I hope you really enjoy it again. God bless you, everybody.